Today, we are going to look at creating our own chord progressions. Chords form the basis of many musical styles, and I thought we would look at a very simple starting point for chord progressions, and then explore some techniques that can make our chord progressions more sophisticated. So, let's just choose an easy key at random. Today, let's try D major. And if we take the key of D major, we can use the following chords. Chord 1 is the tonic chord of D major. Chord 2 is a naturally occurring E minor chord. Chord 3 is an interesting chord. At this stage, we'll avoid using chord 3, but maybe look at that one in more detail in future tutorials. It does add an interesting colour. Moving on to chord 4. It's a strong G major chord. Chord 5, the dominant chord, is A major. Chord 6 is a minor chord on B. And finally, chord 7. Chord 7 of D major is a C sharp diminished chord. We will avoid using this chord today, but we'll certainly use it in the future when we make our chord progressions a little bit more complex. So now, let's construct our first chord progression. Here I have mapped out eight bars, and to establish the key of D major, I'll start with a D major chord. Now just like a written sentence, our chords will lack meaning if we don't have some punctuation. So in a musical sense, cadences are our punctuation. So we need a cadence at the end of the first phrase in bar 4, a cadence that acts like a comma, one that completes the phrase but does not bring the progression to an end. Again, to keep things simple, let's create an imperfect cadence by placing chord 5, the A major chord, in bar 4. Moving on to the end of our progression, we need a closing cadence. A perfect cadence is a chord 5 to 1. It's like a full stop. And so we put chord 5, the A major chord, in bar 7, and a chord 1, a D major chord, in bar 8. Looking at our progression so far, it's half complete. We only have another four chords to add. So from our list, I'll take the minor chord 6 and put it into bar 2. In bar 3, we can add chord 2, which is the E minor. Bar 5, well bar 5 is an interesting bar because often chord 5 wants to lead back to chord 1. But I think that's a little bit early at this stage, so a good alternate is to go to bar 6. Remember, the interrupted cadence is chord 5 to chord 6. So chord 5 can naturally lead to chord 6. We don't need to go back to chord 1 so early in the progression. We only have one chord to add, and we haven't had a chord 4, so we put a G major chord right here in bar 6. Our first progression is complete. OK, I am going to make one little change to our progression. Right at the end, instead of going 5 to 1, I'm going to go 1C51. Now 1C chord really does act like 5, it just gives us a different colour. At this point, we have a chord progression that is entirely functional. If you wish, you could just stop here and use this progression to create a meaningful composition, and indeed, it would give you a great basis from which to work. It is not necessary to do anything more sophisticated than what we have already done. I do, however, want to show you some techniques that will add more colour and flavour to your chord progression. We have already mentioned that chord 5 leads naturally to chord 1. This being the case, we can treat any chord as a chord 1 and proceed it by a chord 5 of that chord. 
This might at first seem a little difficult, so let's find an example in our progression. In bar 5, we have a B minor chord. If I now treat that B minor chord as a chord 1 in B minor, rather than the chord 6 of D, I can proceed it with an F sharp major chord, because F sharp major is chord 5 of B minor. And doing so allows me to add the first accidental to the progression. We are adding a new colour to the chords. OK, now that we've done this successfully, let's see if we can add some more chord 5-1 movement. Remembering that we are not talking about chord 5 to 1 in D major anymore, we are looking to add some chord 5-1 dominant to tonic movement between chords of the progression. I think it's easier if we do a few examples and just show you how it works. So in bar 1, we have chord 1 of D major. But what if we see this chord as a chord 5? It means the following chord should be a G chord. Can you see how this chord works? This dominant to tonic movement, chord 5 to chord 1. Now we've already established a dominant to tonic movement in bars 4 to 5. But if we treat bar 4 now as a tonic, we can proceed it with a C-sharp chord, a chord built on C-sharp, and in this case it will be a C-sharp diminished chord. So bars 3, 4 and 5 now act like a 2-5-1 progression in B minor. I know this is going to be tricky for some of you, but just, just follow it through. I think you'll get to understand that we're simply just finding opportunities within the chord progression to have some dominant to tonic movement, some chord 5 to chord 1 movement. Now let's just do one more. Now despite our 1C to 5 movement in bar 7, despite that the whole bar acts as an A major chord 5 of D major. So let's just treat it as an A major chord. But instead of seeing it as a chord 5, let's see it as a chord 1. That means we can proceed this chord with the dominant E major chord. Do you see how that works? We get a dominant to tonic movement between bar 6 and bar 7. It's E major moving to A major. OK, so I'm sure you can now hear that our chord progression is sounding a little bit more colourful. I'm going to do one more technique, show you one more technique before we close up. So, using the same principle of dominant to tonic movement, that's chord 5 to chord 1, I'm now going to do something a little more radical. I'm now going to leave bars 1, 3, 5 and 7 as they are, although I've slightly changed bar 3 to a more manageable A major chord, and treat every chord as a tonic chord. Forget about their relationship to D major. We're going to treat them as tonic chords. This means I can precede each chord with a dominant chord. And just for fun, let's make each dominant chord a dominant seventh. So the dominant seventh of A major in bar 3 is E7, or E dominant seventh. The dominant seventh of G major in bar 5 is D7, D dominant seventh. And the dominant seventh of A major, remember we are treating the entire bar 7 as an A major chord, the dominant seventh of that chord is E7, or E dominant seventh. To finish the progression, we just place the tonic D major chord at the end, and it is complete.
So much of what we have done today is considered traditional harmony. There is, however, one little jazz technique that I want to add to our progression. Take a look at the bass line. There is a lovely descending chromatic line that is only interrupted by the E7 chord in bar 6. If I instead use the jazz technique of a tritone substitute, this means raising the bass note by a tritone, i.e. we're going to change the E natural to a B flat, look what we get, an entirely chromatic bass line. So today we started with a very simple chord progression, identifying the cadence points and filling in the other bars with the chords of the tonic key. We then added some more sophisticated chord movement by adding some dominant to tonic movement. But it is important to note that the quality of your composition is not always determined by the sophistication of your chord progression. Many of the world's most successful composers have used very simple chord progressions. Just ask Mr. Packerbell. So, create a progression at a level that suits you and use it to compose something magnificent. So, to recap the process that we have taken today, number one, choose a key and identify the cadence points. Use imperfect and interrupted cadences to conclude phrases and perfect and plagal cadences to draw sections and the entire piece to a close. Point two, fill in the other bars with chords of the tonic key. And point three, our final point, use dominant to tonic movement to add more color and complexity to your progression.